all know Subodh Gupta. I shouldn't say it though, but he is the real star of Indian art. We have many stars in our country which are very well known, but in terms of recognition by art museums, art galleries, art critics, biennials, triennials, art shows, he is the first and probably till now the only Indian artist who has been given that recognition which any artist strives for. He is the one who has been given shows, who has been given that kind of respect which artists deserve. Although Indian art does deserve much more, but he is a living icon in front of us who has made India proud all over the world. You name any big museum, you name any big collection, you name any big art gallery, art connoisseur, artist, art critic, they all look at him with awe. I have myself been a witness uh, we were showing in Lille in 2006. There was uh, a festival of India in Lille in France. There I was one amongst the many artists from India, but he was the real star. I saw his installation when it was opened by the mayor. I really, really was almost into tears when I looked at the expressions of the people. They were genuinely, really awestruck by his work. We are so proud. We are so very proud and honored the both that you have really given your time, that you have come in here. Chandigarh is the only place in the first place in India where he is delivering a lecture. Thank you so much, Subodh, and I hope that we have a good beginning and we'll have you again and again. I pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Divan. Thank you very much for introducing me like this. But, first of all, you have to learn I will never like to know myself as a star. I will like to know myself just an artist. And uh, I must say, I'm really proud today to be here. And uh, thanks for that. I'm here going to show you some of the, my uh, earlier work, as well as some of the, my new works. I'm not very good in talking, but I will do by my Bihari accent, so mind me. Uh, Everybody knows, uh, most of the people who know of the contemporary art, they know about me, little bit, no doubt about that, where I'm coming from, what I do, my background. But still, I like to introduce myself, maybe some of my new friends here. And uh, so, definitely, I born and brought up in Kabul, Dhanapur, a small town, 99% population in that town, they work in the railway, so do the, my, my family. I, uh, but uh, same time, there was lots of something happening, a small theater group, a small, due to the uh, railway colony, there were some activities was going on over there. And uh, thanks to my mother, who used to take me when I was a baby, take me to see a theater. So that time I knew I was going to do something different. And uh, here I am today. So I'm showing you a uh, again, I'd like to say something. Uh, I trained as a painter. When I was in art school in Patna, I painting. When I left the Patna, I was painting. But always I wanted to do something different. And fortunate or unfortunate, I'm not showing you any painting here. I'm only showing you my sculpture and my installation. So, I'm starting from 1996 the works, where I wanted to do something and I did it. I was in a residency in Delhi, a place called Sanskriti Kendra, where the three Australian artists and three Indian artists, we worked together for two months. And uh, we need to create some artwork. So this was the first installation ever I did it in my life, and a sculpture. So this was the, my first installation called 29 Mornings. I given the title 29 mornings because there is a 29 Indian stools, Patla, is there. While I was making this a sculpture, I was thinking what I will do as an artist and why 29 months, mornings, why the Patla. But I do remember when I was a child, I sit in this Patla, eating my breakfast, lunch and dinner. And, uh, 
So first of all, like any European artist working on the chair, like collecting like 19 chair or 29 chair or whatever. But same day I collected this partla, 29 partla. And uh, each of them partla, some of them is painted, some of them put in some uh, uh, objects, some of them like you see. Uh, but mostly is my childhood memory. And uh, honestly, I'm first time talking and showing the slide in India like this. But uh, like all we know, born in somehow in, in a Hindu family, so religion is somehow is a practice like Hindu family. They're always like something going on. If somebody died, there is a sharad. Somebody born, there is puja. So always festival taking place in and out. And in that festival, the ritual ceremonial festival, any children is growing in that atmosphere, either subconsciously or consciously, you remember those uh, ceremony what taking place in a home. And is that affected me very strongly as a childhood memory. And uh, same time, as a person, when you're growing in the family, and how sexually, how educationally, whatever, brother and sister, how you're growing, and it's, that's real. That's real India. And uh, that's I collected in those 29 mornings chair, and some of the memory, and it's, I will say 29 memory, I put it in that 29 part law, and that's why I call 29 mornings, this particular words. And this particular given me lots of advantage. Uh, I got selected for the many scholarship, uh, many exhibition, uh, so really very important piece of mine. And uh, 1999, this piece in Fukuoka Art Museum, Japan, they asked me to exhibit that particular work. And not only I exhibited that particular work, it's also in their collection. So this particular work is gone in the museum, so as an artist I feel very happy about it. Uh, I think everybody knows about the coach. Poj is a one uh, non-profit organization run by the artist, for an artist. We started it in 1996 uh, uh, when Robert Loder came to India and uh, selected few of us artists. And uh, when we formed the group, because don't forget, uh, uh, in the name of the contemporary art, nothing happened in this country. Even living in the capital, Delhi, neither National Gallery of Modern Art, they are doing something very contemporary for an artist, neither any single gallery apart from the market. So not as such atmosphere was happening in the contemporary art scene in India. And uh, when this uh, offer come to us through Robert Loder, I must tell you about him. Robert Loder is a British person who, with Anthony Caro, many years ago he has started the workshop. And this gentleman not only did it the work, uh, uh, bring us together and uh, advise us or promote us to do something like that, uh, uh, he did it in the Kenya, he did it in China, all over the Southeast Asia country. And today many of artists uh, taken benefit out of that. And I am the one of the product of coach. And the uh, help of Puja Sood, she, she is the one who running for last 10 years the coach. And she is a very important person for the coach. And she is given all her uh, career in that, uh, uh, to bringing the coach together. And the way she works, I must appreciate her for that. But same time, uh, uh, this is the, uh, 1997, the first workshop taken place in the coach in Modi Nagar where this my first installation I did it, My Mother and Me. And title I given My Mother and Me because cow done something, we all know how much important for us, not in the religion by the energy by to the way he gave us food. And I remember using the cow cake for many occasions as well. So uh, that material is so close to me and that's why I, uh, it's, I did nothing. Like you see all over the country, uh, they make the house like that. But they keep the cow and cake for the rainy, protect for the rainy season. But same time, uh, I made it hollow so you can go inside and uh, and it's like a temple. And that's why uh, I call that. Next slide, please. You can see the from inside. This is the view. 
next one. Again, uh, uh, like I said, Khoj given me a lot. And 1999, again I was part of the Khoj workshop. And uh, this was the, my first performance ever I did it. I wanted to tell you a story about this particular work. Uh, I was in Bodhinagar, I was working. But as an artist, always like 25 artists working, 15 of them from abroad and 10 or 15 from the India. We worked together. But when I was working, I was always thinking, what I'm going to do here now? So what I done, I selected the village nearby, Modinaga. And I went every day, and I taken the photograph of the village person and asked them to give me one object. But none of them, villager, was ready to give me any object to me. But why they give me here. So I decided I will buy the new object, object for them, the same, and I will collect the old one from them. And then they agreed, okay, I give you, they were happy to collect the new one. So end of the 10 days my workshop, I collected lots of material. But same time, I felt, what I'm going to do now with this object and with this photograph? I felt like I'm a journalist, not an artist. My conscience doesn't allow to do something with the photograph and the object. Then I realized, okay, where this object is coming from? And then I realized most of the home where I went in the village it was covered with the cow and cake and clay. And the most of the object came from the ground. So I thought, okay, why not I take this all object to the ground and also myself go to the ground and confess with those objects and that will be my performance. And that's over I did it. So I lie down for my, I cover myself for three hours uh, with the clay and cow dung. And like, next slide, please. And these are the objects uh, I collected it and I buried them. So from distance you can't see them. When you walk on the way, you're able to see this. And that particular piece is for Pio. Uh, this is again my self portrait 1999 in the handmade paper covered with again cow dung. This was the show in Happen in Delhi picture. And uh, like in India, in abroad, always ask, oh, you Indian, you party. Same way in India, the Bihar people look at it. And it's often asked question when I was in Delhi, oh, so Bihar, you are an artist too? So, yeah. So, always this question happened. And always when you will tell them Bihari, Bihari, the Bihari itself will be their kind of slang. So that's the hidden politics, the hidden humor in this country. If Bengali came in the city, they call Bengali, Mallu they call Mallu, Guju they call Guju, Bihari they call Bihari. So that's the humor always has striked me as a Bihari. And if he is, I am Bihari. Why not? What's wrong with the being a Bihari? So I made myself my self-portrait and written Bihari and this Bihari fluctuates in the light and is called Bihari. So identity, sometimes people try to escape with the identity but identity is very important to begin with and that's why I never forget that my identity. Next slide please. Again, uh, this is the work called The Way Home and uh, like uh, first of all is uh, where the, I begin with my stainless steel utensil series and uh, this particular work in Bihar and UP the huge katta is katta is country made revolver like everybody know it mostly but uh, still I like to explain and uh, I was reading in the article and I saw it like uh, many places. And the way this Katta culture merged with the home and with the family and the society and the crime take place or non crime take place, both things happen. And that's the way I'm coming from. With the, and I painted uh, the life size cow uh, 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 in the fiberglass uh, and they say life size cow, I did it because cow is a shift significant animal in this country would not only represent, would not only find only the roadside, also like all of us we know how the significant symbolic is for this country. That's why I, uh, I always take uh, 
one object or uh, already that particular object contain lots of meaning. But like I put many object together and many object containing itself many meanings and I put together it's like many short story I use it to make my own story. In the same way this particular world called The Way Home and uh, you can, like you see, I uh, country made revolver, I cast it in the aluminium and chrome plated it with the uh, uh, utensils and, the, and that's why this particular work called uh, The Way Home. Next one please. Again, like we all know ki how important this ambassador car is in this country. Not only used by the political, but the icon of India in the same, in the vacuums. And always I picked up day to day life what's striking, what's most important and uh, this is a life-size car, ambassador car casted in uh, aluminium and I call them Doot ambassador but uh, I like it because uh, I'm very fascinated with this car although I don't drive it, I love to drive it but uh, because the uh, many problem with the engine and the hot and all this but still I love this car too, wish I could have just keep it in my car parking. Uh, that's why I casted them and keep this one in my car. Next one, please. Again, I uh, take the most, like uh, when I made painted the cow and the cow dunk and uh, many uh, work I did with that. And then it's a similarity when it's come to the, uh, uh, this, uh, I call this bullet because the infield is called bullet and the same time it's a coincident take the double meaning. But uh, I call honestly this like a mechanized cow. In the early days when the cow used to come to your home and used to give you milk and in city this is the mechanized cow come your door to door and give you milk. And all those things that strike me very much and where I get influence from. So that's why I casted this piece in the bronze and even the uh, milk pot into the bronze but chrome plated it. And that's why this particular work called Bullet. Next one, please. Uh, this particular work I did in the Bajal Art Fair. And uh, three years ago, four years ago. And uh, I was very inspired by the... Uh, I must tell you a story how I come to the Bundle series and the Migrant series. When I was starting my career taking place and I was traveling abroad a lot, but sometime I had to take the, my flight from the Gulf. Uh, I stopped over in Kuwait or Dubai to come to India. But it's so contrast change. When you come to, uh, from uh, uh, Europe to the Dubai or Kuwait, all the flight get empty. And then suddenly you see lots of people come in the flight. And you get surprised where they're coming from and who are they. They are nobody, they are own people, they are my people from my country. They just went to for hard working labor and uh, they, some of them in drivers, some of them do building building jobs, some of them something and after two years or six months they are spending their time. When they come home, that's very fascinating when they pack their bundle, colorful bundles and I must tell you sometime most uh, uh, amazing thing I can see that uh, bundle is so, always so in striking for me. And always I thought about what will be inside in this bundle. You can't even open them so easily. And uh, it's, but what will be inside? It's somebody dream. It's a dream is inside. That person who must be spending their time abroad, collecting the watch or the family gift, whatever. But for that particular person, that particular object is a dream to bring home. And that's why that particular person, the way they tied the bundle, is like for them everything. And, the way, and that's why that uh, bundle is so fascinating, the way it's packed. And uh, that's how I come to the, this series. And I call oh, fascination also not about the bundle, not about the working, also the dream about the going to abroad. So that's why I call the Cross Seven Seas. And, the, uh, and I made this complete installation. And this is a real container well from the airport and it's moved and I did the whole installation. Next one please. 
what you looking at here is a detail of the those uh, installation so i given the particular uh, sculpture and different title and uh, yeah, please going next one please the same series the way i'm carrying on next one please uh, i like to tell you i know uh, uh, like how i came with the stainless steel utensils to use in my as a my sculpture is a it more than 80% population of this country either poor or middle class like we all see they use a stainless steel utensil to use day to day life same time i am very fascinated about the food i like food in the sense not only i like to cook if i could not have been artist i would must be cooking food somewhere and uh, that's how i came very close to the spending lots of time that's why i uh, lots of time i spend uh, uh, spending time in the kitchen i came through this stainless steel utensils and uh, i realized uh, over the years the how can a sculpture can be simplified how can be uh, um, a sculpture can be looked at very differently not as just a, as a image as a sculpture about the figurative and abstract form but very differently the object you can see day to day and how can we something as a as a mural and something so this is the piece called curry and uh, i did that next one please and uh, same time when i made this uh, sculpture i start using some of them more important uh, uh, object in a giant uh, uh, sculpture and i made the bucket and this bucket i made it uh, because i remember uh, in my home long time ago when there is a no bucket in front of the bathroom must be somebody having a shower and that's how we used to recognize you know, somebody in the bathroom and uh, the bucket is very uh, uh, significant and very symbolic and very the, in the form by so simple and everybody can look at it very simplicity object i must say that and i strike and that's why i made this particular work in a very different way next one please uh this is the work in the lille in the france where i met divan first time what he was talking about it and i must tell you a story about this piece so i'm so happy i can't tell you he uh, two months ago after uh, Three years ago, we did this project, but they did not dismantle this work. And two months ago, Mayor of Lille bought this particular work, so now it's going to be permanent sculpture in this particular church forever. So this will be first uh, permanent sculpture anywhere in the world for me, and I'm so happy that they kept it like like that. And uh, it's a very monumental, very beautiful space, like you see. next yeah uh this work i did it in uh, 2006 in the france again uh, the curated by nicola borio and joram shah nicola borio uh, he always liked my work and he the one who introduced me to european world and uh, when nicola borio was curating this particular show he asked me to give me the proposal for this particular uh, exhibition and the exhibition is called louis blonds means white night and it's only happen for only for 12 hours it start 7 o'clock evening finish 7 o'clock in the morning and nowhere in the world the art carnival take a place like this in paris every year uh, they invite new creator and they invite new artist and uh, 2006 there was new creator nicola borio and joram shah and they invited me from india as well along with the many other art world and uh, i went i went to visit paris and i went to uh, uh, see this particular church is in saint bernard church in paris they have a also political uh, political uh, uh, interest in this church because in the they say in the migrant time when the in the crisis time when the people come and uh, they don't have a visa and passport and they have no place to stay the most of the people are staying in this church and that's why also i chose this particular church and 
I remember uh, when I was visualizing this particular work, Skull, I don't know why that time it was, we were going through, like we, uh, uh, I'm not a political artist, but I like to uh, uh, sometime, the way we watch television today, the way we heard the music, the way everything happened, you, we're talking on the phone, you, family, and all this distraction, all these things come to your mind within one mind and you all the time distracted with many things, but you're thinking something, same time. And uh, like, uh, uh, why I said very hungry God? I said because very hungry God, because first of all, uh, like uh, there's a two kind of disaster take place in this world. One is man-made disaster. We are all know like uh, the, the way the Gulf War, all the war is taking places. And uh, other one is a natural disaster where when the tsunami take place, when the earthquake take place, many kind of things, no? And uh, whenever things, something happen, we always say, oh God, like the God one who did it everything. So that God is that hungry, eating so many people. So it's very satire and very different way. And same time, I always believe ki anything happen, any problem happen in any single home, first thing is affected is the kitchen. You always look for the food and get destroyed. And that's how uh, we depict our life and death. So that's why I made the skull and put it the, with the made with the kitchen utensils and the species called very hungry God. Next one, please. The same particular work uh, collected by the, uh, uh, um, one of the very big collector, Francis Papino, and he has a own particular museum in uh, Venice, and this particular place called Plagio Grassi, where he exhibited that piece. And honestly, it has given me lots of uh, uh, um, encouragement and lots of popularity at the same time, this particular work. Next one, please. I uh, wish I could have a video for this particular work because it's a kinetic art and it moves. I given that uh, uh, it's lo like you see the loss of stainless steel utensils, but it's a sushi belt. It moves uh, like you when we eat sushi food and the moves. So I use the sushi belt and make it the whole city out, out of that. When it's moving, like whole city is moving. And same time, I given the title suit uh, a silk route because the. Uh, one of the oldest root of, uh, but same time today when we talk about the globalization and uh, when the food is the one thing, like today become a sushi is so common, you find everywhere, like Chinese food. Chinese food, when you find it, it looks like many people, the today generation, they think it must be they cooked in from ancestor and belong to them. You know? And we call Chinese food, like uh, all the children, they love it. So the way globalization taking place and the food is the first thing who mix with the people and then before the people. And that's why this particular work uh, carrying many tiffins, many kind of food in conceptual lies way. And uh, that's why it's moved and that's why given the that silk route. Next one, please. Uh, this particular work, uh, I had a show in Paris where I made this particular work. It's called One KG War. And uh, I, and this is the, exact 1 kg gold, I casted in 1 kg gold, this particular work. And I did it because I could have casted this particular work in any medium. It could be clay, it could be iron, it could be anything. But I wanted to cast in the gold. And if I could have money, I casted in the diamond. But it's not possible. I said it because the, always people talk about the war. And the war becomes so common. It's like today, it's like... A, I'm selling vegetable. How much war do you want? One kg war, two kg war, five kg war. And the war, same time, we about depict the power. And we're fighting for the power. And uh, always money and the uh, gold and the silver is about the power. And that's why this particular work called one kg war. And uh, cast it in the gold, 24 karat golds. Next one, please. This is a very abstract work and it's called Black Things. It's made out of uh, uh, tong, chimta. Chimta, like since I'm using, using the stainless steel uh, uh, equipments, uh, the chimta is one form, 
who always uh, uh, very different uh, and the way we all use it for making the chapati bread. Uh, but always I was getting very strike, not only Chimta, because also when I was in school and when I read the story, Munshi Premchand, when we wrote Hamid Ka Chimta, so I forgotten about Hamid, I forgot about Munshi Premchand, but I remember only Chimta and taken it from there. And uh, not only that, most of the art is not about the meaning. Don't see all the art and looking for the meaning all the time. Sometime is the blank is also the blank wall, the blank uh, monuments uh, also telling something as very meaningful, but how you take it at, how you absorb those things. And uh, like grandma or my mother, when they're knitting the sweater for myself or for my kids or for grandchildren, the how she talk and even sometimes she fighting and sometimes praying and sometimes uh, screaming, but still the hand moves because they practice. So sometimes when artists want to draw something as if when he take the pencil and paper and when they're making the drawing and they don't know what to draw. Sometimes we also, we are confused too. So I don't know what to do. But sometimes pencil moves. And the way the pencil moves, we, we create one kind of line and drawing and one kind of form. And that form itself, we like it because created by us. Same way, this is the drawing in the sculpture made out of chimta and it's called black thing. Next one, please. Uh, again, the door has a, like we all know very, every single home have a door. And we have a many saying about the door too. And it's such an important, uh, so this particular door is very simple door I taken it because I don't want to take the designer door I don't want to I wanted to take very common door who's really um, you can find number of the door this kind of form many places in India and that particular door I cast it in the bronze and exhibited in gallery like this so it's look like another room is there but nothing except as a piece of artwork and called door next one please uh, this particular work called mitre because in the wall is in the corner is taken the place and again I made out of the utensils and next one please yeah image please yeah again a uh, uh, huge uh, I get advantage little bit about the while I'm looking the object no doubt always I get influenced with the form of the lota too and this uh, uh, the way lota taken only two places one in the field and one in the puja room. So <laughs> contradiction with the lota uh, uh, is so significant and uh, I'm, I sound like a UFO, no? And uh, so I created the UFO and, and unidentified objects. And uh, here it is front of you. Next one, please. Uh, this is the work I did in the Pomerie in France. And uh, the show created by uh, Daniel Buren is one of the most important French artists. And uh, Pomri is the place in France where they make the wine and champagne. And I never been before that kind of place in my life. But when I arrived there, many artists we was working inside the. Uh, uh, it's like a cave, and you can go almost like uh, ten kilometers inside, and you find the sailor keeping the oldest bottle you can find in you no know, inside a cellar wine and champagne uh, lots of wine bottles and it's so it's a, like a piece of, it's, I never been that kind of place but this artist especially asked for the create, uh, creator uh, to many artists to create the work inside of the sailing cellar and uh, we was all find but when we arrived there I can't tell you how long it this is I felt like a rat when I was working there, but it's shivering cold because it has a freezing atmosphere. And every artist will work in the afternoon and run for the afternoon to go have a mini champagne, come back and again work. So it was good atmosphere. And uh, when I arrived there uh, with these utensils, I don't know what to do. But uh, when I saw the space, this work immediately taken decision and that's the way I made it. Pandargar, I given the title like uh, one of the object you see mostly kept in rice and dal and many uh, many uh, grains inside the home 
and and those uh, uh, object uh, not for the water mostly for the grains and uh, that's why given the title vandaka and uh, yeah you can see the work in front of you in the height of the proportion next one please again i am very much fascinated with the um, one day i was uh, got up and the newspaper i saw 27 light years okay what's that mean and somebody told me to to reaching another planet 27 light year it will take time to coming and light because it go very fast and still i could not understand but i like the title 27 light years and i make the rocket maybe it can fly before the light and uh, i given the 27 light year title of this but next one please is exhibited first in manchester then in uh, tuilerin garden in uh, in paris and uh, i this is captured found the home in i think lisbon uh, next one please you can see many work i made with the utensils is one of those next one please i never been abroad before when i was baby in school and always is to fascinated ki how the other country people live and eat food and when i eat potato in childhood i thought potato belong to us and no other country people have must be have a potato except indian people have potato and uh, when i travel abroad abroad potato is become a very similar form very similar way also cooking style little bit different but test similar almost uh so see potato eater i given the title the taken from the bangkok painting is called potato eater and i casted this potato in bronze look like a jack like a potato and that's why i call potato eater and and kept in the plastic bag and exhibited like this in the gallery next one please uh this particular work i given the gandhi three monkey always when i see gandhi three monkey today i thought ki is not true nobody believe in this anymore and nobody gandhian philosophy believe anymore so i was wondering ki what will be gandhi monkey about today who will be are they who are the monkey today so i thought the army who fighting for the war is one of monkey terrorist who fighting for the uh, their own things and they call terrorist they are another monkey and uh, in the same way the we talk about the science and chemical and don't know which world we going to go that is the third monkey as an artist view and so i created this particular work in my own way and use the old stainless not stainless steel utensil this is the many times i also i use sometime old utensils so i found in the uh, scrap yard and buy from them and they make work out of that and it's called gandhi three month next one please uh, well i thought i don't have a painting to show you but here is my painting as well uh, so i'm happy i can show you some my painting too next one please uh this is the work i did it in the italy uh italy in san gemiano in tuscany the place in the san gemiano very touristic place very surprising to find the serious gallery like this is called gallery continua the what they did is in that particular town there is a cinema hall and that cinema hall they converted as a gallery space and uh, one of the most important gallery today in italy in contemporary art and uh, when i went inside this cinema hall gallery i went in nostalgia completely because in the railway cinema i have in my hometown too and i used to go to see movie in childhood so something connection come out and cinema is how popular in india so what i did i asked the gallery ki anything is remain from cinema here and they said ki whole room come and show you and they opened the one room for me and i found the many object with the with lots of dust and the spider and everything but i'm like wow i found the object and here is so 
So I bring it out all the object from that room, particular room, and I casted them and I exhibit with the real uh, object plus the casted object. And I say, this given the title, there is always cinema. And you, I did the many works out of that. And this is the one of them. Next one, please. So I found this door as well. Next one, please. Yeah. So like I find the old film, so I casted the film. Plus I casted in bronze and both the bronze, but the one is chrome plated, one in not, but exhibited like this. Next one, please. Uh, the similarity was going like we use the roof tiles here, terracotta roof tiles. So in Europe also, in France and Italy, they use lot terracotta of roof tiles. And I'm very much fascinated with the terracotta. I love it very much. And uh, so I casted the terracotta, plus I kept it both. Um, it's a part of that. There is always cinema. Next one, please. And this gallery has a, still they have a stage of uh, where they put the screen, but where they keep the artwork. So uh, I'm exhibiting that particular piece there. Next one, please. This is the very different work I did it. Uh, when I got uh, uh, Hans Horsbist from Serpentine Gallery, when they're creating about the show about the India, and they asked me to be participate. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do something very different. I never did it before. And uh, because I was in the court in Haryana, very close, since I live in Gurgaon, and uh, I have to go for a particular meeting, and I was really surprised when I see the tools and the table, how the law I work. They all they did what they do, they put the chain so nobody can take their table and chair. And all in the broken, very, very uh, bad uh, condition. But uh, everything is working, office is working, fan is working, coat is going. So I was very surprised with the whole atmosphere. And uh, I tried to create something from there. So this is the installation I made on a call date by date. Next one, please. Yeah, go to the main. Uh, again, this is the big installation. I did it uh, for the Tate Britain in London. And uh, this particular work called Line of Control. And uh, I given the Line of Control because when we talk about it, like uh, when the Kargil take place, and uh, when we both the uh, country, the two politicians, uh, was talking about the we, we're going to throw the war we're going to happen war we're we going to throw you nuclear and uh, our many minister was talking about okay we are a billion of people if we die 20 million people what will happen so sometimes surprise me ki, okay for the like uh, somebody two school ch children fighting together and it's really uh, something strike you back and you look at your whole things and then how can the person who ruling the our country, they can speak like that uh, and strike. It's something irritate you in your mind. So this particular piece I given the, you have to control your mind where the line is. And that's why I given this particular title. And next one, please. This is a very natural work. I saw it somewhere in the Bihar and I was very struck by the tree root is coming from the window. And I casted that tree as it is and exhibited it in the gallery. You see the detail made in fiberglass. Always I wanted to cast this particular piece in bronze. But might I will do it later, but uh, it's very tough to do it. So I'm still looking to have a solution how I'm going to do it. Next one, please. Uh, I like to go in the detail if it is any. Yeah, uh, this is work I call Aam uh, Because uh, I, this particular mango, I cast it in the bronze and painted a jack look like a mango. So uh, uh, this is the bronze mango, but uh, I, my feeling was if I bring it the life to the, this mango, that will be the ideal. And uh, I achieved a little bit very close to that. And uh, this particular work uh, called Aam Aadmi, like we all know why I call Aam Aadmi. Go next one, please. All over the country, like we Saturday, every Saturday, uh, many people come and they put the uh, coin in the wall and they ask you for money. And the belief is almost similar all over the world. Either you go Italy, China, anywhere, the throwing the coin is like a culture. But they have a different belief. 
but they will always throw the coin uh, 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 to something for a spiritual religion, for their own satisfaction, or many other things. But uh, somehow, the how the very similarity you will find in the every single culture, but uh, a very different way. And that's why I made this particular piece, and the Kepeni for belief, and uh, like you see, it's a, uh, this thali is a, almost six and a half, seven feet long, uh, casted in a stainless steel. Uh, nobody able to make this thali in India because it's very tough to achieve that kind of uh, uh, realism in thali, the smoothness. And uh, so I made this particular thali in USA, in the foundry. And uh, you see, I'm exhibiting in my, ga uh, uh, my uh, last solo show when I had a house in Worth gallery in London where this particular piece I exhibited it. Next one, please. The detail, the coin from all over the world including India. Next one, please. For me, as an artist, because I came from the very different background, the people say, Ki, what do you believe in it? I believe in the real people. And real people, who are they? Sometimes this worker who making the big, big giant building, a labor. Look at their sandal, look at their uh, cloth. And those so innocent people, they're working for the two braids for every hard working. And, uh, that's why uh, I always believe them, they are the most honest and these are the real God, living God. And uh, that's why I take in the sandal and worship them as a particular, uh, uh, like you are the higher person in my class. And that's why okay, I believe you. This is the, again, very big spoon, uh, like thali I made it. And I, when I was eating one day dinner and put two spoons together and it's like a humor, but same time, I got that idea from then and I will do it something like that. Yeah. But like two animal animals when they sit together. Next one, please. Uh, this is the very different work. I did it. Uh, it's called Itchi Dusham. And uh, three years ago, when I was in Tate Modern watching the exhibition, exhibition was with the Picabia, Manray, and Dusham. And this is a fantastic curated exhibition when I was walking through and when I reached to the Duchamp works and where he painted the Mona Lisa moustaches with the pen he scribbled it. And that time I thought, yeah, I will also make Mona Lisa. Like uh, Duchamp is no more anymore in this world, but sometime you, as an artist, you wanted to have a dialogue with the artist. And I thought, if I write any later to Duchamp, how will write? And I thought, yes, I can write one letter to him and salute him as an artist. So I thought, make a sculpture out of that. And I said, it's Dusham. So for me, I just like having a dialogue with the Dusham artist to artist. And that's why this particular piece I made. You see the back. When you see the painting, you never see the back. And uh, that's the whole idea. But I will never achieve the fineness what they done it. But little bit uh, humor, little bit try. You see it inside. I have a, a small two minutes uh, video as well. If you're interested to see, should I show you? This particular video I made uh, for the Chanel. I got uh, um, commissioned to do something. When the Chanel is a luxury bag, luxury goods, the handles, I was very uh, confused. Ki how come I work with the, what I will do with the art with this luxury goods, except talk about the money. And uh, so always artist conscious is not about the money. It's always you in the art, you wanted to try to prove something as an artist. So I asked them, okay, look, it could be only way I will work with you because idea will be mine and you will not interrupt with my idea. It could be about bag. It could be not about bag. But uh, the way my bundle is, the way I made the, my migrant series, it's also bag. It's not Louis Vuitton bag, but it's bag. And uh, uh, same way, this particular work. Please, can you show the video?
Thank you. Uh, sir, I wanted to know the work which you did, like uh, the cinema work, in which you casted the similar machines and similar stuff which you got from the room where there was so much junk. What was the idea behind doing that when the similar stuff, like there was already a stuff which existed, you could have displayed that. But why did you cast it them again? We do, as an artist, pick from here, put it here. And itself, sometimes, like we use in day-to-day -day life, but you give them place to that particular uh, uh, object, object itself transform and give the special value and a special meaning. Otherwise, you will not look at that object, that uh, 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 in motive, when you put it in the place, you will suddenly, why this object is like this here? But you will notice that and you will, uh, uh, that object itself also transform within the object. So that's the reason behind it. I would just like to ask you that every installation of yours has a story behind it. If we keep the story aside for a layman, how would you explain your works? I don't need to. First of all, uh, that's why I'm a visual artist. And if I need to explain many things, I could have been writer. So that's why one thing with the visual artist to get advantage, you don't need to explain work. You need to explain work while you're making it. But of course, there is always meaning behind the words. So which particular work you have a problem, if you clarify that. Uh, and no, generally I'm asking that everything is having a story. So that's it. Yeah, no, but do you see the... Did you ever seen something like that before? As a gallery? Not exactly. Exactly, that's yeah. the whole point. So, uh, there is a, like I was talking, same thing. I never, I, I'm the copycat. Okay. I take things from day-to-day -day life. Nothing I take it from beyond that. So, what I'm looking at in my home, in my friend's home, with you, or with, with the world, Everything uh, is an art itself. So, taking from there and putting in the special plates itself change the value of the objects. And you notice them, and that's why, uh, uh, and many of the artists did it before. So, in the, but each of them, like I, I hope I explained the words, uh, uh, why I made the bronze mango, and why I call Am Atni because the way the position called Aam Aadmi and this is the only mango is also reaches to the common people. The orange and the apple come from the Kashmir or many part of the world but mango belong to every, uh, almost every place in India where the common people access to that. And satire is about when the politicians talk about the Aam Aadmi and how the Aam is coincident with the real mango. So that's, that's, that's uh, uh, interest me as an artist. And that's why I do believe that there is a meaning in each work of mine. How do you join the tenses? How do you keep them joined together? I uh, weld them together. Weld them together. You know, your video was really revolutionary. You are from Bihar and we have nets like marvels. So can we call you moving installation marvels? <laughs> Why did you choose such a big scale? You work in a lot, like, you know, heights and stuff. Why did you choose such a big scale? Uh, otherwise, nobody noticed you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, look at me. I'm so, look, I made this such a big work. But sir, if you make this much small work, and if you show, people will write, oh, what is now, this? Now, this is like before. <laughs> but is that was not only reason. I uh, also, I like to, like, uh, India is such a big country. And uh, every thing we talk about always in the largest scale. And if same thali and same spoon, I put it in. Because I make m many utensils together, then it takes a different form. But one particular thali, if I put it the same size, it's not came that essential. And you're right, I can do the small one too. It's not like that. But the way is I work, it is my style. Same. Thank you, sir. Really commendable that you took all these Indian ethnic stuff abroad and displayed it in uh, beautiful museums abroad where art is really, really appreciated. But what my concern was, why not in India? And what could we do? I'm sure there are lots of students here. What could we do to you know, bring this contemporary art 
and made it very, very popular within this country. Uh, it's nothing, nothing to do with you and me, honestly. Thanks to the one today, due to I'm here. But in fortunate and unfortunate in this country, nobody gives you value in that way. Like uh, when I was exhibiting, making this particular work and try to exhibit in the gallery, nobody in the gallery in India was interested to uh, show my particular work because they said, "What is this? This is it every day. This is art today." Bahar se aake logon ne pucha, dikhaya, exhibition ki. Now again, people asking me here. So it's a other way round, but it's a sad thing actually, if you ask me. And, uh, and uh, that's why we're talking to Devan in the Ecole de Boja University. They asked me to teach, but no, in, in this country, not a single university asked me to come and talk to. And I love to talk to the students, I love to talk to the friends, I love to talk to the people. Like today, Devan gave me the opportunity to hear with you all of to talk to me. I feel good about it. One thing is that uh, like somebody discover as an artist, this is my method, I discover. And uh, it's my signature work. And, uh, and many times you wonder, like I do many things, because my mind is puzzled. But wish you can do, like many artists, like whole life they paint and they paint and they paint and it's still they discover in the painting many form, many thoughts, many things come together. And I must tell you, if for an artist, one life is nothing. And uh, so, even I will do the button every single day, I do believe it will something very new thing I'm still missing and can come out. Even I don't know. Is skull wali? I, I think I spoke about it, why I made the skull. Uh, I think very clearly uh, I spoke about it uh, for a long time about it. Two uh, disaster and one is natural. And it's every uh, funny thing, every European people, Western people, they think ki a skull is their own vanity. They're the only the, they have a right to make a skull. How come as Indian artist I can make a skull? Food ke Food ke so that's why I was saying, ki, uh, sir, like you get up in every morning and there is a, some kind of form of the object eating your food. And suppose every single day you, that, that object you will get without the food and the, without the food life depicts the uh, hunger and hunger depicts death, death. So there is a relationship itself with the agents of life and death. And that is a very significant symbol. Uh, we know what you've done in the past. But what are you going to do next? I have a three solo exhibition right now going to happen. The first, I'm working in the marble as well. The new series of my sculpture <coughs> in the marble. And uh, again, I'm making a pencil in the marble. And uh, I have a solo show in Seoul, then in Scotland, and then Delhi. I saw you in Patna. Uh, I've seen you in New Delhi, Monday House, struggling in 96, 97. And it's really bucolic to uh, ask question because I'm absolutely mesmerized, as uh, Devan says. Uh, what I just want to share with the people that I was, last night I was uh, skimming through one uh, book, Art Magazine from New Zealand, and uh, there was one article which I had gone through, and even there, there was your name in that. And you were representing not India, but the uh, you were representing Asia, whole Asia. And that's a big compliment and I'm really proud of you. Thank you. You are taking India to Europe as you are representing them. What other things could you no, feature no, thematically other than this? You, uh, one thing I thought was the skull was something different. Where I would, in my opinion, there was a breakthrough. Anything else you would add? This is the same question I asked by European uh, art lover, ki my work is Indian. Well, nobody asked Jasper John question why you painted the American flag. Because what I'm trying to say, ki end of the day, definitely artist is going to influence, influence which country they live, which culture they live, which politics they live, which agenda they live. And, uh, Mexican artist, European artist, American or Western artist, I'm not going to accept them uh, they're making something about like that. Only Indian artists can make something about like that. 
And of course the European artists, they have their own influence, their own political agenda. You see their works. And because we, their history is long, and we're watching them for a long time, so we get used to. Nobody make, uh, uh, why many, they, they all the, those uh, historical artists, they make uh, still life with the apple. Yeah, to apple khane ke liye nahi apple So, is, is, a, a, is a something about, uh, uh, for artists, is always get influenced with their own. And definitely there is a other thing like I made the Itsyu Dusham and uh, other works. It's nothing to do with India. I'm having a dialogue with a completely the different level. But the problem not only here, the problem is over there. They think, oh, this what we don't like it because it's not Indian. So it's not like this question is the first time you rising. It is a, many times this question come up. But my job to make an art and and uh, let the look. What can I do? What can I do? Such a you know, detailed explanation, and we all know it's coming from the heart. Here is not a so-called intellectual artist. He forewarned us in the beginning that you have to bear with my Bihari accent. He doesn't use these words unknowingly or he's, he's not a naive painter. He's a very significant artist. I, I, I'm nobody to give him any certificate, but uh, it's only uh, some feelings which I'm sharing with you. Artists are always supposed to be very humble, very connected, very grounded. He's one of them. In spite of having achieved the heights he has achieved, in spite of having brought us laurels, not only to the country but to the whole of Asia, he is still very grounded. He was candid enough to tell that nobody in the, in the country has invited him before. So thankful to you, Subodh, and so thankful to the people of Chandigarh. You have always responded, always responded with such a warm heart. Anybody who goes from Chandigarh, they talk about us. And this is what we are giving them. I request you and thank you at the same time again that we let's keep doing that. Let's keep bringing the very best from the rest of the country, the rest of the world to this very city and share their ideas and share the bread, thought and share the press with them. Thank you so much again.